Good morning, and welcome to the live stream of Central Presbyterian Church's worship service. Um, the bulletin for today's service is available at our website, www.centralprespb.com. Uh, and with that, I'll go ahead and have you turn your attention to the announcements. Most of these announcements are not on the back of the current bulletin, but um, we will get them added um, here in the next few days. Uh, for those who are interested in the These Days uh, um, uh, daily devotional, the April, May, June issue is, uh, has ar arrived at the office here at the church. If you're interested, uh, please contact the church office or, uh, shoot us an email or a, um, message on messenger. Uh, we will make sure to get one out to you. Uh, uh, the Pine Bluff, uh, mayor announced yesterday that there will be a curfew that goes into effect tonight from 9 PM to 5 AM to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Um, the session has made the decision to uh, continue to stream our services for the foreseeable future. Uh, please follow us on our social media channels uh, and we will notify you uh, if any changes are to be made um, when things hopefully get better soon. Um, our username on all of our social media channels is Central Prez PB. Uh, next up is uh, our online tithing. Hopefully, will be set up this week. Uh, if you are behind or uh, wish to mail your tithe in, you can do so to uh, Central Presbyterian Church at 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas 71603. Uh, our last announcement is that um, the Presbytery of Arkansas Youth Council uh, announced this week that Senior High Youth Quake has been canceled. They will be holding an online quake uh, the weekend of, uh, or the Saturday of April, I believe, 17th or 18th. I can't remember what day that was. Uh, if you're interested in registering for that online quake, you can uh, look for the information at the Presbytery of Arkansas Youth uh, Council Facebook page. We'll also link to uh, that information at our Facebook page. Again, our username is Central Press PB. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Let us worship God. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weaknesses since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, first using the prayer printed in the bulletin and then silently. Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our cry. If you should mark inequities, who could stand? Our sins have crippled us, bound us, and buried us. They have cut us off from you who is life itself. But there is forgiveness with you. With you is great power to redeem. Breathe your breath into us, O God. Breathe your spirit into us. Hope the graves that our own making and call us to come out to you that we may live in full knowledge of your power and steadfast love. Amen. As people born of water and the spirit, we have died to the old life and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. 
Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the 37th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 14. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. We turn now to our second reading from the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 45. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha, Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. <clears throat> then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. <clears throat> and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. 
but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <clears throat> For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And when Mary heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she met, went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone <clears throat> who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, had, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. 
that hearing we might believe, and that believing <clears throat> we might live lives of richer and fuller joy, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Four weeks ago, <clears throat> as the season of Lent began, we started a journey that led us to a number of different encounters, beginning with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. We entered into the barrenness of Abraham and Sarah and the confusion of a Pharisee named Nicodemus. We paused at Jacob's well and Jesus encountered a Samaritan woman. And last week we saw how Jesus revealed himself to be the light of the world to a man who had been blind from birth. Today, our journey takes us literally through the valley of the shadow of death. As we draw ever closer to the cross and descend ever deeper into the darkest shadows of life, our journey of Lent, or through Lent, <clears throat> reminds me a lot of the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. And if you've never been there to see it in person, it is truly something to behold. As you walk along it, it begins very low and then rises high in the middle and then returns to its original height. The provo provocative design of this memorial, conceived by a Yale architectural student by the name of Maya Lin, actually represents how the war casualties mounted from the beginning when there were very few and tapering up to the height of the war and then eventually tapering back down as the war ended. But in the middle, in between the beginning and the end, the wall grows to great height, almost as if you yourself were descending into the valley of the shadow of death. And at the point where casualties in the war were the highest, the wall itself stands many feet above the visitor's head. And you are overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of how many people died, each name etched into the black walls. Men who gave their lives in service to this country. And as I stood there on my trip to the memorial years ago, I was struck by the overwhelming feeling I had of being surrounded by death. It was a feeling I would experience again when I lived in Germany and visited the site where the Nazi concentration camp at Bergen-Belsen had been. Everywhere I turned, there were mass graves towering high above my head, huge mounds of earth which concealed thousands upon thousands of victims of hatred and cruelty. When I visited it, it was four decades after World War II had ended. But the eeriness of death still lingered in that place. And the sheer silence 
was deafening. I sometimes wonder if Ezekiel experienced something quite similar as he stared at this valley full of dry bones in his vision. He stood in the middle of a killing field, littered with the dried bones of his own countrymen, still lying where they had been struck down by King Nebuchadnezzar's army. In many ways, that valley itself was a mass grave. But unlike the ones that I saw in Germany, no one had taken the time or care to bury any of those bodies. There they lay, dried up bones being bleached by the sun, a gruesome reminder of how far the once mighty Davidic kingdom had fallen. Jerusalem itself had been destroyed. The temple had been sacked and burned. A third of the people were left behind. A third of the people had been killed. And the rest had been carted off into exile in Babylon. But more than dry bones lay before Ezekiel that day. Before him lay the shattered lives, the broken dreams, the quashed hope of God's chosen people. Before him lay death and hopelessness. That dream of God's chosen people residing in glory and peace was over. It seemed as if God's plan for God's great and mighty nation, through whom all nations in the world would be blessed, had been thwarted. As this text puts it, the whole house of Israel was saying, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. In the midst of the fears in our present moment, the continuing rise of those who have confirmed cases of COVID-19, the rising number of deaths, the fact that this week in this country, we overtook the rest of the world in confirmed cases reminds us just how helpless we truly are. But even had we not been plagued by this pandemic, we would know what it means to be surrounded by broken dreams and promises and relationships, all of which have been destroyed or laid waste, we know what it means to be dried up. Death is all around us, and it doesn't take us long in searching to find our very own valleys of dry bones where everything is utterly hopeless. Over here, there are relationships torn and broken to the point that you doubt they can ever be healed. Over there, one finds inner demons of guilt and shame, coupled with feelings of inadequacy, which torment and cripple the human spirit. Over here is physical pain that seems unbearable. Over there, illness and disease which rob and maim. It seems that since our first parents' hellish feast in the Garden of Eden, nothing in life on earth is as God intended it to be. Where once there was abundant life and possibility, there's now only death and decay. So it is that Ezekiel responds, O Lord God, you know when asked, 
can these bones live? In other words, God, I haven't a clue. All I can see is the hopelessness and emptiness of this moment. Fast forward now to the story of Jesus and Lazarus from this morning's reading from John, and things are hardly any better. Twice in the 11th chapter of John's gospel, we read that Lazarus has been dead for four days. And when Jesus commands that the stone be rolled away, Martha protests, Lord, already there is a stench. The very smell of death permeated the air. And we still live in a world where the very smell of death permeates the air. Loved ones die, businesses die, dreams die, hopes die. The stench of so much decay and decomposition is enough to make many of us shout at times, life stinks. But there is hope. There is new life. The dry bones can and will live again. And that hope finds its truest expression in our Lord's words, I am the resurrection and the life. I imagine when Jesus uttered those words, heaven itself resounded with the triumphant shout, death, where is your victory? Because the living God whom we worship is always about the business of bringing life and that in abundance. And so it is that God would tell the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy to those bones. And Israel, Ezekiel saw those dry bones take on sinews and flesh and skin. And then when commanded to prophesy to the breath, the Spirit of God came and breathed new life into those dead bodies. And Ezekiel at that moment was reminded of God's covenant. And he began to understand that the people of Israel, despite what they believed, were not cut off completely. They would one day return to their homeland. They would one day rebuild their nation. Because Ezekiel learned an important lesson a lesson the people themselves needed to know. God has no use for a people that is dead. So just as he had prophesied to the bones, he is told to prophesy to his nation that they themselves might come alive to the promises of God. Death and exile will not be allowed to have the final word. Our present pandemic will not be allowed to have the final word. God says, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. And in like manner in John's gospel, the stone is rolled away. And though the stench of death permeated the air, Jesus infused the atmosphere with life. He cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out, still wrapped in his grave clothes. And then Jesus commanded, unbind him and let him go. So the people did so, and new life emerged out of death. You know, Benjamin Franklin once said that some people die at the age of 25, but aren't buried until they are 75. 
many parts of us may have already died and may have been buried deep within our psyche, so deep that we may not even remember them. There are parts of our own lives to which our Lord Jesus still cries out with a loud voice, come out. These are the parts that we are called upon to unbind just as the crowds unbound Lazarus. Some of those dead parts lie buried because we have had bad experiences and cannot or will not remember those parts. Some of those parts which were so vital have been so abused by others that we have hidden them in order to protect them. We have buried them because of the way others have treated us. But Jesus stands at the tomb of our own making and calls to those dead parts and says, come out. Because nothing is so dead that the life giving reach of God cannot touch. Wherever God's spirit breathes, there is life. There is no heart too scarred, no community too broken, no place on earth too desolate that the Spirit of God cannot breathe and bring new life, blossoming forth in joyous celebration. We, in this moment, are being called on to remember that sin and death have been defeated and that the promise of eternal life is ours here and now. Or to put it another way, death, where is your victory? Because God brings everything out of nothing, creating the heavens and the earth and new life and new possibilities. The dry bones could not knit themselves together on their own. The people of Israel could not escape exile themselves on their own, and Lazarus could not arise without being called. God brings about life, and in that life, God instills abundance. So we render rightly and appropriately all honor and glory to God, but as God's people, we have a role to play. Ezekiel was told to prophesy to the bones and then to his people. We are told to tell the world of the new life in our midst. Similarly, Jesus commanded first that the stone be rolled away and then that Lazarus be unbound. And we ourselves are privileged to be about the business of unbinding others, that they themselves might experience life and wholeness and join in the chorus of God's praise, announcing that death has indeed been defeated. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. At this time, let, it, let us affirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
this time, I uh, would invite you all to share any joys or concerns you have through Messenger or Facebook. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, in the midst of death and decay, we receive the good news that you offer resurrection and new life. Breathe into each one of us that we may experience that new life and newfound joy. What a privilege it is to be able to approach your throne, O God, and lay our concerns at your feet, knowing that not only do you willingly listen, but also that you mercifully respond. And so we lift up the needs of others, confident in your grace to heal and protect. We lift up Cody Cockrell and give you thanks and praise that an accident which might have killed him did not. And we pray for his continued recovery as he faces the possibility of additional surgeries in the future. We continue to remember Bradley Von Tunglen and Pray that your healing hands be upon him and that his infusion tomorrow will go well and put him one step closer to health and wholeness. For those who, on top of everything else, endured the horrors of a tornado yesterday in Jonesboro, we pray your strength and support be upon them. As yet another challenge to rebuild and restore. In the midst of very trying and challenging days already has been laid at their feet. May they know that they are not alone and that we, your people, and we, the citizens of this great state, stand with them and behind them. We pray your blessings continue to be on Laura and that you fill her with your strength and sustaining support. Lest we ever forget, O oh God, we pray for all who have been impacted by COVID-19, for families who grieve the loss of loved ones because 
they have been taken from them. For those who are struggling to cling to life because they have contracted the disease. For the men and women who are on the front lines fighting this battle. The doctors and nurses who put themselves selflessly in harm's way to treat others to test others, to offer solace and comfort to others. Oftentimes, with limited resources, oftentimes with governmental bureaucracies blocking their efforts and oftentimes too often at the cost of their own lives we pray healing be given to all and that what we have come to call our new normal might be overturned not that we might go back to life as it was before, because in the wake of this pandemic, there cannot be a return to business or life as usual. Let us take the lessons of love and compassion, patience and sacrifice from this moment into a new and brighter future where no one is left out, left behind, or pushed aside by greed or callousness. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace, or at least metaphorically, sharing the good news that God brings life in the midst of death, hope in the midst of despair, and support in all our moments of need. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.